One of the most difficult parts of steering a vessel is avoiding water that's too shallow. In most cases, maps and scanning technologies are enough to prevent these accidents, but it only takes a momentary lapse of judgment or a spot of extreme weather for things to go wrong. From cruise liners and cargo transporters to Navy vessels and oil tankers, join me for today's video as we look at 15 ships that have run aground. Number 15, Costa Concordia. Often carrying many thousands of people at one time, modern cruise ships are fitted with the latest technology, which makes them some of the most advanced and safest vessels at sea. Despite all these precautions, though, there's no accounting for purposeful human error, and that was the cost of one of the biggest cruise ship accidents in the past few decades, and an accident that resulted in the loss of 34 lives. The Costa Concordia first set sail in 2006, and was at the time one of the largest ships to have been built in Italy. Measuring 952 feet, or about 290 meters long, and with a capacity for 3,700 passengers and 1,100 crew, it had 13 publicly accessible decks and a range of amenities such as the world's largest exercise facilities at sea, a Turkish bath, a solarium, five restaurants, and plenty more. Being captain of a ship like this was a real honor, but this was what led to a serious accident in January of 2012. The captain at the time changed the route at the last minute to sail closer to the coast in Italy, apparently in an attempt to wave at the people on shore. This turned out to be a fatal error, because the waters the ship sailed in were far too shallow, and the Costa Concordia ran aground on an underground rock. Water soon began pouring in, and the vessel capsized, leading to a mass evacuation and a huge criminal investigation in the aftermath. Number 14. MS World Discoverer First called the Bewa Discoverer when it launched from a German shipyard in 1974, the MS World Discoverer was sold to an adventure cruises line in 1976 to be used as a vessel that could take tourists to places many others couldn't. One of its regular routes was to the Antarctic polar regions, something that was made possible because of its double hull that meant it was classified as a 1A ice class, and to improve the experience it was fitted with a fleet of inflatable rafts that allowed passengers to get even closer to the ice flows in the area. As an entertainment and educational ship, the World Discoverer had an observation lounge, a pool, a sun deck, as well as a lecture theater medical center and a research lab, along with a regular staff of biologists, naturalists, and other scientists to operate the tours on land and perform their studies. In April of 2000, while traveling back from Antarctica, the World Discoverer hid an uncharted underwater obstruction in the Sandfly Passage of the Solomon Islands. The captain was able to send a distress signal to the nearby city, and everyone on board was safely evacuated before he steered the heavily listing ship into Roderick Bay, where it has remained ever since. Now, rusting away, all salvage attempts have failed, and the wreckage is a popular sight for those that live on the islands and passengers passing by on other cruise ships. Number 13, MV Panayotis. Built in Scotland in 1937, the MV Panayotis was a cargo vessel that worked throughout Europe under various different names, but mysteries surrounding her ultimate fate, along with the stunning location where the wreck can now be seen, means that she's one of the most visited shipwrecks in the world. According to legend, she had fallen into the hands of smugglers, said to be working for the Italian Mafia, and was used to transport illegal cigarette shipments. In 1980, the Greek Navy tracked her down and set chase into a storm, and the Panayotis was purposefully run aground in a cove so the crew could escape. Official records, however, state that the ship had in fact been carrying legitimate cargo when it was caught in the storm, and instead of being chased by authorities, the captain chose to beach the vessel to try to preserve the goods. When locals saw the wreck, they plundered it for all they could, and this led to a lengthy legal battle that resulted in 29 people being convicted of theft. Whatever the truth may be, the MV Panayotis became immovable from the beach on the island of Zakynthos and remains there to this day. The previously unmanned cove, which now attracts thousands of visitors each year, is called Navaggio, which means shipwreck. Number 12. Edward Bolin You'd normally expect to see the remains of a ship that's been grounded to be fairly close to the ocean it was sailing on, but that's not always the case. Amazingly, the Edward Bolan currently lies in the desert more than a quarter of a mile away from the coastline 
because the landscape has changed so much since it first became stranded on a rocky outcrop that was very much in the ocean. The ship began operating in 1891 and spent most of its time ferrying people and cargo along the African coast. At just over 310 feet or 94 meters long, it had a top speed of 10 and a half knots, and along with a large cargo hold, it had an accommodation for about 46 paying passengers. Its route took it past some of the most treacherous coastline regions in the world, and places that became renowned at the time for scuttling ships. In September 1909, the Edward Boland suffered a similar fate to many other vessels while journeying between Swakopmund in Namibia and Table Bay in South Africa, and it ran aground in Conception Bay, Namibia during a storm. It was an immediate write-off, and because of the expanding desert, it now lies inland in a region known as the Skeleton Coast, alongside countless other wrecks. It's in quite a difficult-to-reach location, but it's a must-see site for anyone traveling through the area. Number 11. The Yon 42 First launched in 1942, the Yon 42 was a gasoline barge that immediately went into service for the U.S. Navy during the Second World War. It was a non-propelled vessel that had to be pulled by a tugboat and would be positioned in places of strategic importance to allow other warships to refuel directly from it. Assigned to the Asiatic Pacific Theater during the war, the Yon 42 had several close calls with Japanese submarines, but survived the conflict and continued to supply gasoline throughout. When the war finished, though, there was little need for the vessels like this, and the Yon 42 was eventually struck from the Naval Register in August of 1949. Quite what happened to it after this isn't entirely clear, but for some reason it became beached on the north coast of Lanai, the sixth largest of the Hawaiian Islands, in 1950. As this was in such a remote location and wasn't interfering with shipping routes or local communities, the decision was made to leave the Yon 42 in place, and it can still be seen there to this day. Now, because of its history and usefulness during the war, the Navy recommended it to be protected as part of the National Register of Historic Places, so it can be preserved as a local tourist attraction. Number 10. MS River Dance The MS River Dance was built in 1977 and was a roll-on, roll-off ferry that operated all around the world. It began working in the Mediterranean and then spent time in the Caribbean before being transferred to a charter company that covered routes in the Irish Sea. For 30 years, it reliably transported cargo from place to place, but this service came to an abrupt end in January of 2008. While sailing in the Irish Sea off the coast of Blackpool, the river dance was struck by a powerful wave that caused the cargo to shift. A mayday call was sent soon after because this had resulted in the ship listing by more than 60 degrees, and everyone on board was quickly and successfully evacuated. With a developing storm, there was little anyone could do to alter the course of the vessel, and it eventually became beached at Blackpool. For the following weeks, it became a huge tourist attraction that brought an estimated 100,000 visitors to the area, but after accepting that the ship couldn't be salvaged, the owners cut their losses and the ship started being scrapped just three months after the incident. There's now very little evidence left of where it happened, but beachcombers occasionally find small pieces of the river dance that had been buried in the sand. Number 9. USS Port Royal of all the vessels at sea that have the most advanced navigation systems, naval ships lead the way, and this is particularly important considering the dangerous equipment and classified information they contain on board. Despite all the precautions that are put in place, accidents do still happen, and the USS Port Royal is a great example of this. The guided missile cruiser had been sailing in the ocean off the coast of Oahu in Hawaii in February of 2009 when suddenly it made contact with a coral reef and severely damaged itself, and the reef in the process. Visible from the airport in Honolulu, the event gained widespread coverage because of the effect on the environment, and the Navy had to act fast to prevent this from being a PR disaster. It was soon found that the grounding had happened because of a misread navigational system and because of an inexperienced and dysfunctional crew. The investigation led to the captain being relieved of duty and three other officers being disciplined. To clean up the mess, the Navy reattached 5,400 coral colonies in an attempt to fix the reef, and more than $18 million worth of repairs were needed for the Port Royal to safely sail again. Number 8. Exxon Valdez 
Oil is a vitally important resource for industry and modern life around the world. And one of the most common and cost-effective ways of transporting it to where it's needed is by supertanker. They're designed to be as sturdy and as safe as possible, but when things go wrong, they can go wrong terribly, as was the case with the Exxon Valdez. In what was probably the most famous case of a supertanker accident to have ever taken place, the 987-foot or 301-meter-long vessel was traveling toward Long Beach in California after loading oil that had been extracted from the Prudhoe Bay oil field in Alaska. As it passed Prince William Sound, however, it struck Bly Reef and it became lodged at its center. This punctured eight of the 11 cargo holds and would eventually release 40,000 tons of crude oil over the following days, a spill that would seriously impact more than 1,300 miles or 2,100 kilometers of coastline. The incident was found to have happened due to a number of reasons, from the poor actions of the crew to the inadequate processes in place on all vessels like it. The grounding caused billions of dollars worth of damage and led to reform across the industry that has meant that the Exxon Valdez accident remains the worst ever oil spill from a supertanker in American waters. Number 7. SS America The SS America was an ocean liner that was built in 1940 for the United States line and boasted the utmost of American contemporary design of the time. With an original passenger capacity of 1,202 passengers, which was later increased to carry over 7,600 troop passengers, it was 723 feet or 220 meters long and 93 feet or 28 meters across the beam. During its operational life, the vessel changed hands at least seven times and by 1993 had been renamed the SS American Star. At this point, it was aging, and the plan was for it to be refitted and turned into a five-star hotel ship in Phuket, Thailand. The initial works began in Greece, but because of the vessel's age, it wasn't allowed to pass through the Suez Canal, so instead it needed to be towed around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa if it was going to reach Thailand. Just a couple of days into what was a planned 100-day journey, the American Star and the tugboats that were pulling it were caught in a thunderstorm in the Atlantic. The tow lines broke, and despite their best efforts, the crew were unable to reattach them before they were forced to abandon ship. The vessel was left adrift and eventually ran aground off the coast of the Canary Islands. The ship soon suffered such damage that there was no chance of recovering it, and from that point, it was left to the process of nature. Over the following years, it was gradually torn apart, and in 2007, one of its sides collapsed, which caused the structure to split in half and fall into the sea. Number six the Mediterranean Sky. Originally known as the MS City of York, the Mediterranean Sky was built in 1953 as a combination passenger liner to serve the route between London, the Canary Islands, and various coastal cities around South Africa. It was a revolutionary design that could complete the trip between England and Cape Town in just 15 days, and along with her sister ship, supported a hugely important trade route. With the introduction of new and faster alternatives, she was eventually sold in 1971 to Karageorgis Lines, which provided ferry services throughout the Med, and that's when she was renamed the Mediterranean Sky. She continued in operation for a further 25 years, but in 1996, tragedy struck. The ship began to list after becoming stuck at Eleusis Bay in Greece and remained there for six years. The wreck was then towed to shallower waters and then was beached, but then capsized and sank by 2003. Since then, the Mediterranean sky has remained there, half underwater, and has become somewhat of a famous sight. The story took another unexpected turn in 2017 when members of the graffiti crew 1UP managed to gain access to the ship and paint a huge 1UP image on the exposed side, something that's still visible today and can even be seen on Google Earth. Number 5. Emiko Cadiz Owned by Emiko Transport Corp., the Emiko Cadiz was a very large crude carrier that first entered service in 1975. Measuring 1,095 feet or 334 meters long, it was able to carry around 1.6 million barrels of oil. In mid-March 1978, it was sailing past the western tip of Brittany, France, when it became caught up in a southwesterly gale and was forced to take evasive maneuvers to avoid crashing with another ship. Unfortunately, doing this caused the rudder to jam, and despite the shutting down of the engines to try to fix it, the crew were unable to do anything. 
Essentially unable to use the engines because it was impossible to steer, the captain had to hope that a tugboat would be able to pull them clear of danger. But the Amoco Cadiz kept moving perilously close to the coastline. Anchors were dropped and several tugboats joined the effort, but it wasn't enough and the vessel ran aground. This impact cut through the plating of the hull and flooded the engine room. And then the ocean current dragged the ship free and it grounded a second time on the Mengolvin Rock, which is around 1.2 miles from the shore. At the time, the Amoco Cadiz was carrying a full load of 1.6 million barrels of oil, and before any of this could be removed, severe weather caused the ship to break into three pieces, and it was all released into the water. To try to contain this, anti-submarine explosives were dropped on the three main parts of the wreckage to ensure everything had fully sunk so it could then be assessed. Number 4. Giannis D. Launched from the Kurushima Dockyard in Japan in September of 1969, the Giannis D, which was originally called the Shoyo Maru, was a 326-foot or 99-meter-long bulk carrier ship. Over the following years, it changed ownership several times before being purchased by the Durmark Shipping and Trading Corporation that's based in Greece, and began serving routes between ports in the Mediterranean and Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. In April of 1983, it was on a journey between Croatia and Yemen that it encountered difficulties while traveling through the Suez Canal, and as it exited the man-made waterway, it mistakenly took the wrong route into the Red Sea. Steaming at full speed, it smashed into the Abu Nahas Reef, and after suffering extreme damage, was tied by its crew to the reef. A storm broke it up before salvage crews could rescue it, and it now lies on the reef in three distinct sections. Because of its position close to resorts, it's now one of the most visited dive sites in the Red Sea, especially as it's in shallow waters and is suited to novices and experts alike. Number 3. SS Maheno Built in Scotland and launched in 1905, the SS Maheno was a 400-foot or 122-meter-long, 5,300-ton ocean liner that had a capacity of up to 420 paying passengers, as well as the ability to carry significant cargo. Its design was cutting-edge at the time, and it was used on routes between Sydney, Melbourne, New Zealand, Tasmania, and Vancouver. At the beginning of the First World War, the SS Maheno was converted into a hospital ship and would assist Allied troops across Europe. Once the war ended, it was released back to its original owner and resumed its role until the end of her commercial life in 1935. It was sold as scrap to a shipyard in Japan and in July of that year left Sydney under tow. Less than a week into the voyage, a cyclone hit the ship and broke the tow line. Despite the best efforts by the crew, it couldn't be reattached, and the Mahena, with eight people still on board, vanished. It was only rediscovered several days later, stuck on a beach on Fraser Island, where the crew had set up camp, and subsequent efforts to refloat it failed. It's remained in place ever since, and it is possible to walk up to it on the beach, although access is technically prohibited because of its state of decay and the way it's been designated as a place of high risk because of the presence of unexploded ordnance. Number 2. The MV Rena The MV Rena was a container ship that was built in 1990. While nowhere near as large as the giant carriers that are built today, it remained an important vessel on routes around Australia and New Zealand into the early 2010s. It was while on one of these voyages in October of 2011 that the vessel, while carrying 1,300 containers, ran aground on the Astrolab Reef in the waters off the coast of Turunga, New Zealand and would have caused the worst maritime disaster in the country's history. At first, it began listing at 5 degrees, with the front section firmly wedged onto the reef, and within four days, a 3.1-mile or 5-kilometer oil slick had formed behind it after the tanks on board were punctured. Ten days after the grounding, the main structure of the hull had split in half and was only being held together by the internal components. And three months after the incident, after which most of the remaining oil was pumped clear, the vessel fully broke apart and sank. The cost of removing what was left of the wreck was said to be around $250 million, while the cleanup required as a result of what fell free from the vessel would likely continue for years to come. Number 1. The Ever Given Possibly the most famous grounding of a vessel in recent times happened in March of 2021 and blocked one of the world's main shipping arteries. On the morning of the 23rd of March, the 1,300-foot or 400-meter-long Ever Given, which is a supermassive container ship operated by Evergreen, 
was traveling along the Suez Canal in the same way it and countless other ships have done plenty of times before. The problem was that the Ever Given was the largest container ship ever built, and when weather conditions began to change, there was very little room for error. Unfortunately for the crew, strong winds caused the bow and the stern to be lodged in opposite banks of the canal, effectively preventing any other ships from passing. Within five days, 369 ships were queuing behind it, which held up an estimated $9.6 billion worth of trade. But the Ever Given was so firmly stuck that it wasn't going anywhere. Finally, six days after becoming grounded, crews had managed to dig the ship free and it was refloated, and it was able to make it to a support lake where it could be assessed. The shipping route was reopened and the Ever Given was impounded by authorities until the owners paid a reported $1 billion fine for the incident. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.